Okay, so let's go over the USACO Silver Problem 2 from 2017, Huff, Paper, Scissors. So Farmer John and a cow are playing Huff, Paper, Scissors. It is just a variation of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Where Huff beats Scissors, Scissors beats Paper, Paper beats Huffs. Imagine this as a rock, essentially. Now Bessie, our cow, is really good at Huff, Paper, Scissors, in which Bessie can predict what Farmer John's action will be. So let's look at the input file that we're given in this problem. Now this is our simple input. We can see our actions are down here. This is just the length of the games we played. So that first line is our length of our games. And here is our actions. So it's P, P, H, P, S. Now Bessie can predict Farmer John's actions. However, Bessie is a little bit lazy, as in Bessie only changes actions once throughout the length of games. Now, if Farmer John were to do papers on her first action, Bessie would know that scissors could beat paper, so she would win once here, and then continue with scissors, and then Farmer John is about to do hoofs, and Bessie knows that Farmer John is about to do this. However, if we want to maximize our wins for Bessie, we should actually stay with scissors since Bessie only gets to change actions once throughout the length of the games played. So Bessie's gonna lose that one game where hoofs versus scissors, and we only have two wins so far out of the three games. Now, if Bessie continues with scissors, scissors again, we get a third win. Then we end up in our final game where Farmer John is about to do scissors. So Bessie's best action is actually to change here, not at hooves, but at scissors, because so far we've gathered the most wins. So we can think about this before wins. Then after Bessie wins the scissors game with a hoof, we're gonna have an after wins of one, and then our total wins is four. We're essentially trying to find out the best combination of before wins and after wins, the max combination. So we are looking at subsets of these Farmer John's actions. Now, most people's first thought is essentially to iterate through every overlapping combination in O of n squared, where we look at two separate subsets. So like a best case scenario for PP, HP, S separately. And then next iteration, it would be PP, H, then P, S, and so on, like here. And then we can reset. However, that is the brute force approach. And we can actually check every combination without overlapping. We can do this with prefix sums. Prefix sums are best when we are trying to calculate a mathematical computation within a certain range, such as subsets. So we can look at this here before wins and make a prefix sum out of before wins and after wins, then compute the before wins and O of one time. Same with after wins. However, making prefix sums for this problem is a little bit complicated. So we need to break that, these prefix sums into three parts. We need to break down our prefix sums into hoofs, papers, and scissor wins. So I'm going to change these to wins. Now we're going to solve for hoofs wins and our sample input. So if Farmer John does paper and we do hoof, we're going to lose. So that is a zero at the moment for our prefix sums. Then if we do it in iteration two again, it's going to be zero, then zero for hoofs again, then zero for paper. And then we finally get a one against our scissors for Farmer John. Now let's compute our prefix sum wins for paper. So paper versus paper is zero. Paper versus paper is zero again. Now paper against hoofs, that's finally, finally a win. Then we lose for the rest of the set actions for Farmer John. Now let's do the scissors prefix sum wins. So scissor beats paper. So that's a game one that we win, then again, two, and then 
hoofs versus scissors is going to be a loss, so we don't count that win. Then scissors beats paper, so that's a win. However, scissors and a scissors is a draw at the end, so we end up with three. Now, if you could see a pattern here, we can see all the wins for a current action we can do. And using prefix sums, it allows us to look at our wins in a certain range. Specifically, let's start with this example where we look at range 0 to 4 index using scissors range. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and my bad, I meant to say index 0 through 3 range. So we can see our current wins by just looking at the current index we ended on, which is just 3. That's 3 wins with scissors, right? And just to review, let's look at scissors wins between these indices, H and P. Although we have 3, we also have our previous number or our start range. We have a start range and an end range of 2 and 3 wins. If we just grab our end range value minus our start range value, which is 2, we get 1. That means there was only one win during this these two games. This is extremely useful as we can pre-calculate every combination of wins, then find the best subset in O of N time as we are already calculating these wins across these three different actions with memory. So the way our program is going to do this is by obviously making this prefix sum. And I actually want to emphasize that I suggest using a dummy variable on the left so we don't have to use an if statement to create the prefix sum. We'll view that when we're coding. So I'm going to have a dummy variable at the start using zero. So we can just add our current value and then again and again and again. So after our program has made our prefix sums with a dummy variable, we then calculate before wins and after wins, then our final result wins using prefix sums. So we will iterate through our prefix sums of n plus 1 range from 1 to n plus 1 index range. So let's start from index 1 for all our prefix sums for hoofs, papers, and scissors. And the way we can look our before wins is by simply comparing these three items, so the current items, then using a max function as here shown here. So out of the three values, our max is actually just one. Then this is the trickier part. There is a property in prefix sums, as I discussed earlier, where we can almost instantly find the wins in a certain range by grabbing an endpoint. In this case, it's going to be n plus one since we only get to change our action for Bessie once minus our current action win. So that's going to be here, here, and here. We're realistically just looking at this range from here to here. However, to get the current wins in this range, we need to include the current index. So 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 0 is 1 here, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Then we find the max of those three values. So it's actually going to be the 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. And then we're also going to use a max wins function or max function to calculate our result for every combination of these prefix sums. So we update max wins if it's a new max and compare it to before wins plus after wins. So in this case, it's going to be 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Great. Now let's do the second iteration, 0, 0, 2. So that's going to be 2. And then we're going to grab the range from these three. The max from here is going to be 3 minus 2. Also, it's going to be 1 minus 0 and 1 minus 0. They're all 1. So I'm just going to call this one, look at our max wins, compare to before wins plus after wins. So in this iteration, it's 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So it stayed the same. Let's look at third iteration, which realistically, it's just like this. Our before wins is this range. However, we could just look at 0, 1, 2, grab the max. So 2 stayed the same. And then we look at this range by grabbing n plus 1, comparing it to the current index, like so. So 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So the after wins is still going to be 1. 
and the max wins for this current iteration is going to stay the same two plus one is three great now let's do the fourth iteration where zero one three our after wins is calculated by our current element which is zero one three and the max of those is three and now we've actually changed before wins and then now we're going to look at after wins one minus zero is one one minus one is zero three minus three is zero uh, so our after wins stayed the same for one and now this is actually going to change so we're going to do three plus one is equal to four and now let's look at the last iteration where it's one one three it's going to say three and then after wins this is going to be zero so we're not updating after wins so we ended up with three plus one is equal to four and that's how we can solve the sample input it's going to be the same for all other sample inputs and that concludes our whiteboard breakdown of the problem of hoof paper scissors something i want to note down is the memory complexity of this and the time complexity so we created prefix sums that's o of n plus one However, that can be reduced to, down to O of N. Then we essentially iterated through all those actions and calculated our max wins by checking every combination. However, since we used memory to pre-calculate these wins, this is still O of N plus one or O of N simply. And then our memory complexity is O of three N since we stored our prefix sums in three different arrays. However, this can be reduced down to O of N. So this is our time and memory complexity of the solution. Now complete our whiteboard explanation of the problem. So let's start solving USACL Silver Problem 2 Hoof Paper Scissors. So just to reiterate, we are playing a game called Rock Paper Scissors between Bessie and Farmer John. Bessie is able to protect, predict all of Farmer John's gestures before he does them. This gives us a big advantage where we can switch to an optimal gesture to win however bessie is pretty lazy and only wants to switch once throughout the game so there's essentially a subset of wins we can call that before wins and after wins and we're going to use a prefix sums approach so let's start off by opening the input file and the name of our input is hps.in and we are reading the file so our first line is essentially just n is equal to amount of games played using read line and strip. Now we need to initialize our prefix sums. And this is kind of the hard part. Prefix sums are best to solve a mathematical computation in a certain range where order matters. And we have three different gestures. Therefore, we should make three different prefix sums. And those three prefix sums are going to be indicated by hoofs, paper, and scissors wins. So we're essentially initializing three prefix sums that represent all gesture wins. So we can quickly calculate how many wins in a certain range to quickly look up a subset such as before wins and after wins. Now I'm going to initialize this from index zero all the way to n plus one. The way I can do that is for line in range n plus one. So now we are actually going to iterate through the input file after our first line. And each line is going to represent the game or the gesture FJ makes. So I'm just going to say for game. So we would see we would iterate through one, two, three, four, five times. So for a game in range one and plus one. Reason why is because I want to emphasize that I'm using a dummy variable here. So I need to iterate from one all the way to n plus one. We have a dummy variable, so we don't have to make an if statement when we're creating our prefix sums. And then we're going to update our prefix sums in each iteration of the game. And then we use the index of the previous game to update our prefix sums like so. So we're done here. So update prefix sums with previous vals values then we're going to read our input which indicates it's an action from farmer john so f dot read line dot strip now we start counting the wins in our prefix sums by looking at farmer john's predicted action 
So let's say if action is equal to a hoof, then we're going to use paper in that current game and then add a win to our paper prefix sum array. And we're going to do the same for the other actions. So scissors beats paper and hoofs beat scissors. So let's check this out. See what we have so far. Made a small mistake. Let's try again. Great. So if we look at the hoofs prefix sum, there's only one case where we should use hoofs and that's at the end to get a win. Now looks, let's look at paper. Same here. There was only one win, which is at line four to beat hoofs. Now let's look at our scissors prefix sum array. And we can see using scissors for most of the game is optimal as we can beat out paper up to three times. So let's look at our sample input for right now. So we have PPHPS and I'm just going to go straight into the answer. This subset where we use scissors is optimal for our before wins. So we can see we can win three times and then we should switch one time since Bessie can only switch one time. And to get the max wins, we want to swap at the last iteration so we can get four wins. So most people think of using two subsets and checking every combination. However, our prefix sums allows us to check all those win combinations and O of N time. So we can start by saying for I in range N plus one. So we're iterating through every prefix sum array. We can calculate before wins and after wins, and we can update max wins in each iteration using prefix sums. And we can use the max function to look at our current wins for our before wins. So let's say zero, zero, one. We actually want to start from one to skip these dummy values. And then we can compare all our prefix sums by grabbing hoofs, the current index, the current game, grabbing paper index and this current scissors element or win then saving it to our before wins and then calculating after wins and this is the tricky part so we already check zero zero one here right now we want to check the wins after that let's say from zero 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 one in our hooves zero one 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 in our paper prefix array and two two three three in our prefix scissors array so we can calculate after wins by essentially Looking at the action and element, and then subtracting by our, our current before wins, which we can do by using action and the current index. And we're essentially doing this for all three prefix sums. Then, once we looked at that subset combination, we're going to update max wins if the after wins it was greater than the current i mean the past max wins so we do need to identify max wins down here or up here with zero we need to initialize it here and then let's print out our max wins and we'll see the result so we get four great so that solves the problem so now i'm going to go ahead and write that output and we're writing to hps.out and we're going to run this we get four great so let me delete all, all my other print statements now we're going to try running this on the web browser and see what we get so now we're on the web page we're going to do python 3.6.9 we're going to choose the file we selected our file we were using we're going to submit it and great it passed all the test cases so now that we've passed our test cases and completed the solution i want to talk about the time and memory complexity which is going to be o of n and i'm going to discuss that in a bit so where n is size of fj's actions we can practically say it's n plus one so let's break in break this down so our biggest contrib contributor off the bat it's going to be n plus one where we're initializing our prefix sums then also n plus one again when we iterate through the input file then we start storing these values into our prefix sums, which also ends up occupying O of N memory space complexity as we append wins to our prefix sums wins arrays. After that, we're going to use prefix sums to check all combinations. And what we're essentially doing is using a max function that uses constant space while iterating through 
all our prefix sums at once. So we calculating max current wins and before wins, then calculating max wins after current iteration to the end. And this only has a time complexity of O of N. So O of N stays the same throughout the whole problem. And that concludes our Python solution. Okay, so let's solve the USACL Silver Problem 2 2017 Huff Paper Scissors. So essentially what is happening here is we have a cow named Bessie and we have a farmer named John and they're playing rock, paper, scissors. And Bessie is really good at this rock, paper, scissors named Huff Paper Scissors to the point where Bessie can predict Farmer John's actions. However, Bessie is extremely lazy and only wants to change gestures once throughout the series of games. Now, one of the best approaches to doing this problem is using prefix sums to find those wins across a subarray range in two parts where we can call those ranges before wins and after wins and they can be calculated using prefix sums. Now to start off, we want to open our input file and we're going to open it using if stream in hps.input file. However, we need to use a couple libraries, specifically fstream or ifstream comes from the fstream library. And we're also going to use using namespace std for the sake of competitive programming. And within our first line, we're defining n. n is amount of games played, which is an integer. Then we can start solving this prefix sums approach by initializing three prefix sums. And the reason why we want to use three prefix sums is to find the wins with one certain gesture throughout the whole series of games. Then later we can find range of wins and of one time. So we're going to use vector on our prefix sums wins. And we're going to name them by the gesture name, which is hoofs, paper, and scissors. And we need to include the vectors library. And I want to discuss why we're using n plus 1. We essentially added an additional element to our vector where the zeroth index is a dummy value. So essentially what we're doing here is initializing three prefix sums, wins arrays with zeroth index dummy value. Then we can start populating the hoofs, paper, and scissors prefix wins arrays, which notes down action wins for every game so we iterate through each game by starting by one remember we're skipping that zeroth index dummy value all the way to n plus one or n essentially here then let's start by grabbing our input from our input file where that variable is going to be farmer john's action or gesture then we assign win to best choice gesture and I'm going to use a switch case statement to express this. And let me just delete this. Where let's say the first gesture is paper. And the way to beat paper is by using scissors. So when we use scissors, we win that game. So we're going to increment that win. And then let's say the next one is hoofs. The way to beat hoofs is by using paper, incrementing our win for that game. And let's say Farmer John's action was scissors. We use hoofs to win that game. And let me just copy and paste this inside the switch case statement. There we go. Now that we've incremented our wins, we also need to account for updating our prefix sums so we can use our prefix sums properties. So this is how we can update prefix sums with previous values. You grab the current game and add it using the last iteration or the last game. So now I'm going to test out our prefix sums. I want to see them, so I'm going to print them out. And we need to include IO stream. Now I'm going to run our print statements. So we get 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. Great, so our prefix sums arrays work perfectly. Now using prefix sums allow us to check all win combinations in O of N time just by iterating, iterating through each game. And I'm going to represent this using I for now. 
And earlier I was talking about calculating before wins. So let's talk about that. So before wins can be calculated by solving for the current element by checking the max variable across all three pairs. So let's say we start from one here and we're going to compare zero, zero, and one and grab the max. We see it's scissors and so on. So let's say at the last iteration, it'd be one, one, three being compared. So we'll grab three. So this is how many wins it has during that current range. So from, let's say, the current iteration, which is the last one, as an example, represents the range from the beginning all the way up to that index. So we calculate max current wins from range 0 to i by grabbing the action and just retrieving that current element at i index. So now we compare all three prefix sums wins and we also want to initialize the value here inside of this for loop. We'll do the same for after wins where we also using a max function and what we're doing here is calculating max wins after current iteration to the end. So this range is i plus one all the way to n. And the way we can represent that in prefix sums and of one time is by just grabbing the endpoint minus that current interval, like so. And that gets us our afterwinds. We'll do the same for our other arrays. Then we constantly update our wins result, which is going to be called max wins, by using a max function and comparing its previous iterations with before wins plus after wins. And we do need to initialize this f outside of the for loop with zero. So let's start writing our max wins after our for loop ends to our output file. We're going to use OFStream, and the name of the file is hps.out. So let's delete these print statements for now. And let's run this. We got four. We look up above. Our sample output is four, so it does match. So now that we've tested our code here, we're going to test it on the website. So now that we're in the current page, we're going to select C++17, choose our file. I named it test.cpp, C++. We're going to submit it. Great, so it passed all our test cases. So just to end off, I want to talk about the time and memory complexity, where n is size of fj's actions. So we started off by initializing our arrays, which takes n plus one time. So, so far that is o of n. Then we use a for loop to iterate through each game, still o of n. Then we can calculate maxes in range of n again. So throughout the whole code, our time complexity is o of n. However, and our memory complexity, it is O of n as well, because we use three prefix sums arrays the size of n plus one. So both of them, time and memory complexity, is O of n, where n is size of fj's actions. And that concludes our C++ solution. Here's the final product from line 56 to 98, and so on. Thank you. Okay, so let's start solving the USACO Silver Problem 2 2017 of paper scissors in Java. So we have a cow named Bessie and we have a farmer named John and they're essentially playing rock, paper, scissors. Now Bessie is really good at playing rock, paper, scissors to the point where Bessie can predict John's gestures. Therefore, Bessie can change to an optimal gesture to beat John. However, Bessie is extremely lazy to the point where she only wants to change gestures once. And we're trying to silver solve the max amount of wins we can get with an optimal subarray of gestures in two portions, namely re referenced as before wins and after wins. And we can solve this using prefix sums. So I'm going to call this prefix sums approach. Now we're going to start by reading our input file using buffered reader and file reader, then naming it hps.input. And our first line is n is equal to amount of games played, and it's an integer n. Now, earlier I was talking about prefix sums. And prefix sums is optimal for this solution because we can solve mathematical computations within a range that can apply to 
wins in a certain range. So we're going to initialize three prefix sums. The way we're going to do that is separating our prefix sums into three arrays so we can count the amount of wins in a certain range using that gesture. So we use int array hoofs, the range of n plus one, and I'm going to discuss the n plus one in a bit. We use paper, we use scissors, and just to reiterate, we're initializing prefix sum win arrays with zeroth index dummy value. That's why we use n plus one range. We have an extra element to avoid using an if statement when we populate our prefix sums. So after we initialize, we're actually going to start populating it. So we populate the hoofs, paper, and scissors, which notes down action wins for every iteration game. And I'm going to use for int game is equal to one. So we start from one to avoid that zero index dummy value. And we end at n plus one. So we're going to start by grabbing our input from our HPS, HPS input file. Then we're assigning the best choice for Bessie to make and increasing that win. So let's grab the action from Farmer John. And then we're going to use a switch case statement to look at the action, then determine what's the best case, best gesture to use to beat Farmer John. So if Farmer John uses hoofs. We want to use paper and we can win that game when we use paper. So we increment. And let's say Farmer John uses paper. We use scissors to win that game. So we increment. Let's say Farmer John uses scissors. We use hoofs to win that game. So now we have incremented our wins at that current game. We need to populate the arrays after. So we are going to put this in the beginning where we update prefix sums with previous values. So we look at the current game and add the previous game win or loss. Loss won't be counted. So now that we've populated our arrays, our prefix arrays, I want to go ahead and print them out just to see what they look like. Make sure we did it correctly. I'm going to import a library. So let's run it to print it out. And we can see our prefix arrays was initialized correctly, where scissors for the most part is the best gesture to use. And then we switch up at the end with hoof to be Farmer John's scissors. So the sample input should be four at the end. So we're essentially using scissors for the first four games. And then on the fifth game, we switch to hoof to win. And we can see a pattern here where we can quickly see what is the best course of action to do in the second to last interval between 0, 1, and 3, where we grab the max to look for before wins. And then we're constantly updating after wins as well to check if before wins and after wins summed together will create a new maximum value, which eventually should do with 3 and 1. So I'm going to delete our print statements for now and convert our thoughts into code. So using prefix sums allow us to check all win combinations in O of n time. So we iterate through each game. I'm going to just call it i, start from 1, like the for loop we did above. And then we start up at n plus 1 and increment i plus plus. So we can calculate before wins with max current wins. So that's a property of prefix sums. So let's say we're looking at these three values, 0, 1, and 3. If we grab the max, which would be three, it looks at the current index elements all the way to zero. So the range is essentially from zero to the current index and just grabs the current element to figure out how many games we've won at that point. So we use int before wins is equal to math.max, which is we're going to use basically an action and look at the current element. And that's how we can find the wins from that range of zero to n. So I'm going to rename this to hoofs and use math.max again, and then compare the rest of the other elements, which is paper and scissors current element. Now to calculate after wins, we calculate max wins after current iteration. So that range is I plus one all the way to N. And the way we can translate that into prefix sums is by grabbing the action at the end point, which is N minus the action at the current index. 
we'll do that for our other prefix sum arrays. And we're also constantly checking max wins, which can be calculated with the max function, then comparing the previous max wins to new max wins by adding before wins and after wins. We also need to initialize max wins beforehand. So we're going to use int outside the for loop. Then once we're done with the for loop, we should be able to get that max wins result. And with max wins, we were writing to the output file. The output file is hbs.out. So let's run this and see what we get. We got four, which satisfies the sample output for the current sample input. Now that we passed that test case, we're going to go ahead and run it on the website. So we're going to select Java, then our file, then we're going to submit it. Great, we passed all our test cases, our Java solution worked. Now we're going to talk about the time and memory complexity of the problem. So let me just delete this to get rid of the print statement. So let's review. We initialize our prefix sum and O of n time, and this also takes memory space of O of n. So, so far we have O of n for both of them. Then we iterated through each game, which is also O of n. Then we iterated once again over each game and O of n time using max functions. Therefore, our time and memory space complexity stays O of n throughout the whole solution. And that concludes our Java solution. Here is my problem answer. Thank you.